Hey everybody, it's Pendragon, and today's video is brought to you by W Energy. So I'm going to keep things short and sweet. W Energy is a clean energy drink that has no sugar, no calories, and comes in a variety of delicious flavors, including Galaxy Grenade and Dragonade. Not only does it give you no jitters and no crash, but it's chock full of vitamins and amino acids, which are great for you. Use promo code Pendragon for 10% off of your order and give it a shot today. And now, on to the video. Hey everybody, it's Pendragon, welcome back to more Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. So last time in Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, we began our hunt for all these various trinities. So let's take a look at our list real quick. Uh, so we're missing one blue trinity, one green, and two white ones. Which shouldn't be too difficult given um, how many worlds we have left, let's see. It looks like, according to my notes here, um, we did it up to Agrippa. So we need to do Monstro, Halloween Town, Atlantica, Neverland, and the Hollow Bastion just to see if we can find the rest of these uh, trinities. So that would mean that... Okay, so the one green one could be in Monstro, or it could be in Neverland, or it could be in the Hollow Bastion according to this, and then the two white ones could be in any of the other worlds. So before we get into that, uh, I know we have... Looks like two more we have to check in Agrabah just to be safe. Uh, just to see if we got that last blue one or not, because there's a blue one in the Cave of Wonders that we've already checked, and then there's a blue one in the Bazaar. But before we get into all that, let's get into the question of the day. So today's question of the day is... What is your favorite trinity? So for me, I would have to say... The blue trinity is always an iconic one, because you know it's the first one you get. But I personally really like the white trinity because, you know, it has the three musketeers and everything. So I enjoy that one personally. Uh, feel free to comment below which one is your favorite. And let's go ahead and make our way back towards Agrippa. Um, I am using the guide, just so you guys know. I believe I said this last episode. But I'm using the guide, that way I'm not running us in circles for the same things over and over and over. Although if I do end up missing one on this guide because I wasn't paying attention or I just happened to miss it and I thought that we already got it, then I'll have to come back anyways, but at least I've shown you guys the areas either way. So let's go ahead and go all the way back to the bazaar once this carpet ride's done. Uh, and while I'm doing this, I'm actually going to let you guys know um, I have been getting quite a bit of uh, freelance voice acting work. So honestly, I've been very, very busy lately. Uh, with not just my uh, YouTube channel, of course, or my school work, but also with my voice acting work that I'm trying to turn into a full-time career. So feel free to let me know um, if you guys want to hear any of like, my impressions or any of the other um, the work that comes out. You know, I could probably advertise it or something as long as I have my client's permission. So I know a few of the things I'm working on right now are like some basic um, app data collection, I guess for lack of a better phrase, uh, where you basically are giving the commands for, you know, various technology. That way they can base the, uh, whatever is receiving the commands, they can base it around a specific set of words, or, uh, what different noises are made when someone speaks. So let's go to the plaza here. I know we have to go to the bazaar, I'm just trying to remember where it is. There's a chest up here that we need to get. Well, not necessarily need it, but I might as well get it while I'm here. I'm just waiting for... Okay, I thought there was like one more creature. Apparently not. But I still hear the battle music, so there must be. Looks like they knocked it down or something. But I guess we can open this chest and we get a cottage. So, uh, actually I lost my train of thought there for a moment again. But, um... Yeah, it's been pretty exciting, honestly, being able to figure out what exactly is, uh is needed in the voice acting industry and all that fun stuff. So it's been really nice to just kind of get my foot in the door, as they say, and kind of get my sea legs when it comes down to it. So, oh, there's the bazaar. And hold on, I need to unlock my phone just to make sure that I'm looking in the right section on here. So it says, in the bazaar, it is atop a platform, which I might have got. Because I don't see anything in particular around here. Plus it's underneath one of these creatures, which it very well could be underneath something. Um, unless I already got it. So I don't see it there. Oh, I think I just saw it under my just experience over here. And of course, you know, all these uh, hot spiders and everything that are coming at us are going to be a pain. Especially while I'm trying to keep my, uh, my phone on so that way I don't have to keep double checking stuff. 
take that down. Might as well start clearing what I can. Uh, also, this is one of the areas that was raised in difficulty after beating the Hollow Bastion. Oh, there it is. There's a little uh, blue trinity that was like right already for foot there. Or feet there. So let me go ahead and take these things out. And I'm glad I actually double checked because at first when I sat down to record, I was thinking of just going straight to Monstro. But I didn't know if I got everything here, and obviously I did not, so I would have missed this. Uh, let's get rid of this creature first, though. Because otherwise this guy's going to annoy us the entire time. Come on. Just like what Sora said there, come on. And gotta wait for it to respawn. There we go. And it's done. Cool. So now we can activate the last blue trinity here. And now we don't have to look for any more blue ones. So there we go with our Mega Ether. And that's about all we get. We got all the XP and the money. So let me double check the journal one more time. So we got all the blues, all the reds, and all the yellows. So now we need one green and two white. So that means, since we already got the storage room, it can't be that one here. And we already got the white one that was here from the main entrance. So that means we need to look for Monstro. Which it looks like a green one is in the mouth, and then a white one is in chamber 6. Uh, then, of course, there is a white one in Halloween Town that we might have gotten. Atlantica only has a white one at Triton's Palace, so we're gonna have to check that. And then so on and so forth. So I will meet you guys over at Monstro's. And here we are in Monstro's mouth. So it looks like... Let me double check the journal, even though it's only been a couple minutes. Um, the green one would be here in the mouth, otherwise we could check for a white one in chamber 6. So it looks like we're going to have to start doing a little bit of uh, platforming around here just to kind of get a nice look at every little section around here. Luckily we can fly and everything, so that makes our lives way easier for this. Uh, is it all the way up? Might be up there like where that chest is or something. Luckily there's no enemies, so that makes our lives super easy for this. Okay, we got a cottage from that chest. I see a green trinity over here. So this must be it. So let's go ahead and get it. And then we'll go ahead and check for the white ones. So we might actually be able to finish all of these up um, in this episode, which would be awesome if we could. So let me get this chest. Let's see what's inside. A mithril shard. Okay. Not too shabby. Not the worst thing that could have been in there, but definitely not the best. Uh, is it this chamber? Okay, that's the throat. Eh, yeah, let's go ahead and go in there. Maybe this will lead us somewhere. Oh wait, no, doesn't this go upwards? We don't want that. So let's hop back down into the mouth, and let's hop into the chambers. I guess we gotta go like the old-fashioned way here. So let's make our way upwards to two. Luckily with the, the high jump and everything, we can actually bypass a lot of the enemies, and ignore a lot of things that normally wouldn't be able to. Oh, there's actually a chest over here, but I'm gonna ignore that for now, since we don't really need it. I didn't see what number of chamber that was, but it's not six, so it doesn't matter. Ah, uh, da-da-da, let's go this way, to five. And six should be the next one. Let's see. Uh, yep, there's chamber six. So we are looking for a white trinity. So let's just start breaking things as Sora gets a level up there with Stun Impact as the new skill. Uh, gotta avoid these guys, of course. So is the White Trinity gonna be on the floor over here, or is it gonna be up in a higher platform? Um, hmm. Don't quite see anything yet, but we're gonna have to wipe out quite a few enemies first to be able to truly know. Because that one green one that was over in the deep jungle, that was like a super pain to find because it like blended in with everything. Um, yeah, I still wasn't able to see it. Oh, and there's a white trinity right over here. So this must be the right thing. Um, do I have to fight these guys? Yes, I do. Of course I do. Okay, at least there's only a few of them. And if I don't walk on to them, it makes it actually a little easier for me, surprisingly. And luckily, there are some basic enemies aside from the barrel spider. If I can actually, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to lock onto them because apparently I'm not aiming properly there. Okay, get rid of that blue one there. I'm trying to keep my phone awake so that way I can make sure I keep track of the uh, trinities more easily. 
And since we only have one left to get, I'm honestly probably going to like skip around and try to figure out where it is. And then I can let you guys know um, where it is after we look for it. Just to kind of keep the episode from going super, super long. And try to take out these creatures as best I can. I would skip ahead, but we're still pretty early into the episode technically. So let's get this guy done. If I can actually hit them. There we go. And of course this dude's back. Come on. Okay, let's heal up a bit because we were kind of low on health there. Playing a dangerous game, of course. And get this guy. Oops, if I can actually aim. Okay, looks like these guys are just spawning back every so often, so that kind of sucks. Hopefully they're just not going to keep respawning because I'm moving away or something. Uh, Ragnarok, go for it. Okay. And take out this one. Now we should be fine if I don't move all the way over there. So now we get the White Trinity. And as you can see, the little all for one and one for all. And let's open the chest. Okay, so we got Dark Matter from that one. Which I guess is a high tier synthesized item, so it kind of makes sense why we get that here. Now we gotta start making our way back upwards. Which is gonna be where things get a little bit tricky. Just cause having to find my way back is the toughest part for me. Um, can technically grab that? No. Never mind then. Well, we're gonna go ahead and make our way to Halloween Town then. So I will see you guys shortly. Okay, here we are at Halloween Town. So according to my guide here, uh, this particular one is on the Moonlight Hill, which I believe we actually might have gotten this one. Now I'm thinking about it because I think this one is like right on top of where, um, oh my gosh, where Jack does this whole Jack's Lament thing from the movie and everything. So let's go take a look. And then if it's not there, of course, I will move us on to the next section because that's the only white one here. So I will move us to Atlantica probably next because I'm pretty sure that's the one we're missing. So let's get all the way to the Moonlit Hill first. Just to make this nice and fast. Uh, okay, it's this thing that I can aim on. So let's do fire. Okay, wait for the creatures. Ouch. Let's hop on over. And oh, apparently I, I goofed on that. I forgot you can't really go over. You have to ride it upwards. There we go. So now let's take a look and see if we can find this. So it says it's at here at Moonlight Hill. But I'm pretty sure we've gotten it already if it's here. Because then we have to kill a bunch of things that we could actually get um, a trendy that was around here somewhere. Because there's also that one over by Oogie Boogie. Uh, do, do, do. Don't see it. Unless maybe I already came back for it. That's very well a possibility. And I couldn't just bypass that. So, oh well. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and cut ahead to where if I don't find it here, then I will see you guys at Atlantica. Because there is only one Trinity there, and I'm pretty sure that's the one we missed. As Donald gets a level up. So I'll see you guys shortly. Okay, here we are at Triton's Palace. I think I actually see the Trinity right over there. Okay, perfect, yeah. So, apparently the last one I was looking for was not actually um, in Halloween Town. It was over here in Atlantica all along. And hidden in plain sight, obviously, because, you know, I never came back to really check on um, King Triton or anything. So, let's go ahead and just take out all these Atlantean-looking dudes. And take out this one as well. Should be the last enemy. Until something else spawns in. Oh, looks like there's something right behind us. Okay, <laughs> apparently something just popped up into us too. So, ouch, two of them. So let's heal. Start smacking. I don't care if I take a little bit of damage after the heal. It wasn't before, so I'm perfectly fine. And of course, the giant jellyfish thing is back as well. So I'm going to have to take out that thing. So let's go for it. And there we go. Go ahead and smack it. Perfect. Okay, and they split into four of them, of course. And I don't think they're far enough away. I, did, I don't think that, uh, nope, you can't get the Trinity. They were in view, so I guess technically, uh, that's a thing there. Also, I keep forgetting that you have to press, uh, circle to, like, move up and then square to move down. But it's weird because circle is also to do, like, your little mermaid kick thing to go faster. 
So sometimes the game will just force you to have to go the other direction when you don't want to. Let's get this last Trinity and see what's in store for us. As the chest appears, and we can open it. And we get Best Friend, which is a trophy for getting all Trinities. So now, without further ado on our journey, journey journal, um, all the Trinities are done. So we are officially done with that. Of course, we have more of the mini games, which is like, you know, Pooh's Muddy Path, Tigger's Giant Pot, Pooh's Swing, Block Tigger, uh, Pooh's Honey Hunt, and the Jungle Slider. Which, this was the one in order to get the, uh, you gotta collect 10 fruit to technically complete it. So, just some fun little mini games you can do. But with that being out of the way, and with us being officially done with this, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start swimming my way back to Traverse Town. Because now that this is out of the way, the next thing that I think I want to do is actually... Hmm. I think we're actually going to go to the official last world. Because now that we've gotten all the trainings out of the way, we've gotten like, you know, a lot of the secret stuff and everything all done. So I think it might be a fun little idea if we just go ahead and get that done before we get too overleveled and start taking on, you know, some of the um, other bosses. Oh gosh, there's a lot of enemies. Uh, some of the like optional bosses and everything. So I think I'd rather, you know, have our good challenge for the ending part. Or for the, uh, yeah, for the official ending to the level as opposed to going for uh, the secret bosses at a lower level and struggling or getting too over leveled and then the final boss, well, official main final boss is a cakewalk. Which they very well might be already, I do not know yet, but we shall see. So let me go ahead and swim in the right direction here, trying to escape from all of this. All the way along, okay that's a, that's a shell there that we don't have to deal with, or oyster clam, whatever it was. Uh, I'm already lost. <laughs> uh, da -da -da. So we don't want to follow the, the tritons, we want to follow their handles. So let's try going down. This doesn't go anywhere, right? No. Well, I'm already lost. And since you guys have already seen this plenty of times, um, I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead to the ending part then. I could technically swim through this, I guess. So I will meet you guys over in Traverse Town. Okay, now we're back at Traverse Town. I figured this is like a nice little home hub for us to resume our mission uh, for the next episode. So, what I wanted to do while I was here was actually go over the journal. Because there are quite a few things that we haven't really caught up on. Because there are a few new things for us. So you can see there are some princesses and extra uh, creatures here that we haven't seen yet. Or people here. So, I'm going to go through the journal as a way to end our episode. So let's go with Sora. The one who fights the Heartless. Upon reclaiming the Keyblade from his rival Riku, Sora sacrificed his heart to free Kairi and became a Heartless. Kairi's deep feelings for Sora restored him. Now he must confront Ansem, the Seeker of Darkness. And then Riku. When Kairi lost her heart, Riku allied himself with Maleficent to save her. Riku was actually the rightful master of the Keyblade, but once he chose darkness over light, the weapon chose Sora instead. Ansem exploited Riku's weakness of heart and possessed him. And then Kairi. Kairi, Sora, and Riku always hung out together. When their island vanished, Kairi lost her heart. It turned out that it was hidden within Sora's. As one of the princesses with the power to unlock the secret keyhole, Kairi restored Sora's heart when he was turned into a heartless. Alright, and then on to the princesses. So Snow White. A beautiful princess, gentle and pure as snow. She is one of the princesses needed to open the final keyhole and was captured by the heartless. Her world has already been swallowed by the darkness. The fair-skinned princess first appeared in Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, 1937. Cinderella. A hard-working young girl who's often bullied by her stepmother and stepsisters. She is one of the princesses needed to open the final keyhole, and was captured by the Heartless. Her world has already been destroyed. Prince Charming first swept her away in Cinderella 1950. Here we got Aurora, who's one of my favorites. A young woman with a lovely voice. She is loved by three good fairies and cursed by Maleficent. The sorceress captured Aurora to help open the final keyhole. She had her first encounter with Maleficent in Sleeping Beauty 1959. Then of course we get Belle, a brave and intelligent young woman who understands the beast's true nature. She's one of the seven princesses needed to open the final keyhole. 
She and the Beast have lost their world to the darkness. She appeared at the Beast's castle for the first time in Beauty and the Beast 1991. Then of course we have Maleficent, so a sorceress of awesome power. She tried to use the Heartless for her own evil ends, but the Heartless were actually using her. She turned into a huge dragon when cornered by Sora and his friends. She first appeared to curse Aurora in Sleeping Beauty in 1959. And then Dragon? Maleficent became a huge dragon when the Keyblade released the darkness in her heart. The dragon wielded both Maleficent's power and the terrible force of the darkness. Maleficent's, power, or Maleficent's powerful alter ego first appeared in Sleeping Beauty 1959. And then Ansem. As a researcher and ruler of his world, he studied the Heartless and delved into the many secrets of the worlds. While studying the heart and the darkness within it, he was possessed by darkness and ultimately destroyed his own world. He sacrificed his body to attain great power, and later possessed Rikus to regain a physical presence. Failure to stop him means the end of all worlds. And then of course, characters too. So we get Dumble, who was one of the summons we unlocked. So a baby circus elephant. He was taunted because of his huge ears, but his talent for flying made him the star of the circus. So you could fly with him. So you ascend with the circle button, descend with square button, hold down the button for splash attack, cost 3 MP. He first flew onto the screen in Dumple 1941. And then Mushu. This is another one of our summons we unlocked. One of the guardian spirits of an ancient clan. He was banished by the other guardians because of his foolish ways. Though small, he has the power of a great dragon. Press triangle button for fire breath attack, cost 3 MP. This ancient dragon heated things up in Mulan 1998. Then of course Alice. So Alice fell down a rabbit hole into Wonderland. Arrested on suspicion of trying to steal the Queen's heart, Sora and his friends proved their innocence, but the Heartless captured her as part of their plan to open the final keyhole. And then she fell down the rabbit hole in Alice in Wonderland 1951. And I think that's every- oh nope, not everything. Oh because now we're getting into like the extra information on the princesses being kidnapped. So Jasmine, the spirited princess of Agrabah. Longing for a life of freedom, she slipped away from the palace and encountered Aladdin, who she quickly grew fond of. As one of the princesses with the power to open the keyhole, she was abducted by Jafar and the Heartless. She appeared in Aladdin 1992. Then, of course, anyone else here? Oh, oh yeah, now we have uh, the Hundred Acre Woods characters. So, Winnie the Pooh. A little bear living in the Hundred Acre Wood. His favorite food is honey. Being a bear of very little brain, he's a bit absent-minded. Sometimes he even forgets what it was he was trying to remember. He warmed up the screen of Winnie, Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree, 1966. And then Piglet? Pooh's best friend in the Hundred Acre Wood. Tiny, timid Piglet is startled by just about anything. When that happens, he covers his eyes with his floppy ears. He appeared on a Wednesday in Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day, 1968. And then of course we have Tigger. Tigger loves to bounce more than anything. Sometimes his bouncing gets out of hand, but he doesn't mean any harm. Beneath that happy-go-lucky exterior beats a sensitive, gentle heart. He bounced onto the scene in Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day, 1968. And then Al. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit here. <laughs> the wisest resident of the Hundred Acre Wood. Whenever anyone has a question he can't answer, he asks Al. Though Al isn't always right. Al likes to talk, but sometimes he puts his listeners to sleep. He showed us the wisdom of his ways in Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree, 1966. Then Rabbit. Rabbit is an earnest, hard-working member of the Hundred Acre Wood community. He keeps to himself but lends a hand when others need him. He's not always comfortable around the exuberant Tigger. He appeared in Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree, 1966. And then we got two more here. So we got Eeyore. Timid, retiring Eeyore lives in a little house in the roots of a tree. His tail is held on by a tech but it keeps falling off and getting lost. Now he's wandering the woods, looking for a new home. He reluctantly appeared in Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree, 1966. And then Rue. Rue dreams of bouncing as well as Tigger someday. He's mischievous, energetic, and fearless, but grows uneasy when Tigger is not around. He hopped onto the screen in Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree, 1966. And the Heartless. So it looks like we're missing like a couple, looks like early on ones, but we'll see. Um, there we go, there's one of the new ones. The Wyvern, or the Wyvern. Giant heartless that attack from the air. They are quite swift for their size and are hard to attack, especially while they are high in the air. Counterattacking when they come down would be most effective. And that's these guys. The ones that look like little jets to me. Then of course we have the Behemoth, which was one of the creatures that we uh, took down at the Hollow Bastion, I believe. 
So immensely powerful Heartless, with their large frame they trample enemies and repel most attacks. Damaging their weak point makes them lose consciousness. Strike them with potent attacks while they are down. And then nothing here, nothing there. And that's everything that we've unlocked so far. And of course we have Anson's report which we're missing the 2nd, the 4th, and the 8th it looks like. So we only have the odd numbers, unless that's all they have. So I guess maybe we could probably read that if I remember to. Uh, Sora story. Donald and Goofy abandoned Sora and sided with Riku when they found out that he was the true Keyblade Master. Sora was disheartened by their betrayal, but was soon encouraged by the beast to go on. Though Riku now wielded the Keyblade, Sora faced him boldly. Moved by his courage, Donald and Goofy rejoined Sora and helped him regain the Keyblade. After defeating Maleficent, Sora and company encountered Ansem, their most powerful enemy yet. Ansem had possessed Riku's body, and now revealed a startling truth. Kairi's missing heart lay deep within Sora's. To free Kairi's heart, Sora unlocked his own with the Keyblade, destroying himself. Having regained her heart, Kairi awakened. Her power, along with that of the other maidens, completed the final keyhole to the darkness. Somehow, Kairi, Donald, and Goofy escaped from Ansem. On their way out of Hollow Bastion, they ran to a lone Heartless, who turned out to be Sora. Kairi's deep feeling for Sora restored him. Now they must stop Ansem from destroying the worlds. And the Hundred Acre Woods. This is also another one we haven't uh, seen yet because it's also a newer one. So Sora was whisked away to the world of the Hundred Acre Wood, inside a book in Merlin's house. There he met Winnie the Pooh, who said all his friends had banished. Some of, the pa some of the book's pages had been torn out, taking his friends with them. Sora collected all the scattered pages and brought Pooh and his friends back together. A happy ending. And I love my happy endings for that. So, without further ado, I'm gonna end things here. If you guys don't enjoy this video, feel free to leave a like. Consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. Hit the notification bell for we notified when I upload videos. And feel free to comment below and answer the question of the day. Today's question of the day was, what is your favorite trinity? So feel free to comment the answer to that or to say hello. I read every single comment and I take your feedback to heart. So I'm always happy to talk to you guys in the comments. And this has been Pendragon, and I'll see you guys next time.